All right, Instagram, Facebook. <clears throat> the show will begin in like two minutes. Just need to get a couple things. We'll be rocking and rolling. Almost ready. Almost ready. A couple more little things. Um, make sure I got everything. I think I do. I think I do. I think I do. One last check. Get this party started. How's everybody doing? Let me turn this off. Yep. Oops. Welcome to the show. Here we go. Oh yeah, I gotta get Pat on the line. Pat's my um he, he tries to keep track of all the uh, questions because I can't really see them. So let me get Pat on the line and uh, <clears throat> let me uh, talk to everybody for a minute. Um, all right. Welcome to episode 39 of Feast with the Beast. Can't believe it. I think I say this every week that uh, I can't believe it's another episode. And, and uh, next weekend... Um, is, ne is episode 40. I'm going to be in Pennsylvania to my second oldest daughter's uh, wedding. So I'm going to try to set up a feast with the beast there. I don't have any guarantees at this moment, but um, you know, we're going to see if we can make it work. It'd be kind of cool. And um, of course, even if I get it started, I don't know uh, what I'm going to cook, but I will figure that out. So, right, we'll figure it out. Pat's going to be, oh yeah, so um, next Sunday, if we can pull this off, um, it'd be, because you know how we're all scattered, right? So me, Pat, um, and my sister, and my older kids, and my younger kids will all be uh, together in one place, so maybe we can have a, a family Feast with the Beast, episode 40. That'd be kind of really cool, I think. Um, all right, so... Just like every show, if you can uh, share the feed, it would be much appreciated. Like the feed, show Facebook that uh, that this is uh, worth sharing so they'll get the reach out there. Last week, we had um, our highest viewers viewer count um, to date. And I think we were either like 409 or 410. That was freaking awesome. I cannot believe it. And like... I can't remember exactly, but it was like 20,000 views by the time we were done. That is just unbelievable. So um, we want to see if we can beat that. Um, a couple things. We want to congratulate the winners of our fatty, our fatty Challenge. If you're in a Groovies VIP group, it's a private group. Uh, it's free. Uh, we have a challenge every month 
and this month it was a fatty challenge. We had three winners. Um, Brian Bailey was first place, Chaz Munder was second place, and Andy Hershner was third place. So first place got a $100 gift card to grillbeast.com, second got a $50 gift card, and third got $25 gift card to grillbeast.com. Um, so if you want to be in the next challenge, uh, join Grill Beast VIP in Facebook, and um, we will announce that challenge. If As long as I can put the show together next Sunday, I'm going to announce it on the show. So if you're on the show next Sunday, you'll know ahead of time. You'll have two weeks to um, to do your challenge. Um, I think I got to check my schedule just to make sure because I do got to go out of town uh, one weekend in September, and I need to make sure um, that it doesn't interfere with the challenge. Um, again, please share the feed, Pat. How many people we got on right now? I have. In case you don't know, Pat is on the phone, and he kind of helps me keep track of. Uh, Q&A and all that kind of stuff. Does anybody got any questions yet? Um, and so we got right around 90 people. So um, we, if you're new to watching the show, um, what we normally try to do is, is, is show you um, how to cook things or give you ideas that most people normally don't think they can do on the grill or just don't think to do on the grill. Like you can go all over YouTube and find out how to do brisket, chicken, pork, all that kind of stuff. So we don't do any of that here, right? I mean, we do do it, but we don't do it on the show. Um, <clears throat> but like a couple weeks ago, we did lobster ginger scallion and I'm, I'm almost willing to bet that I might be the only one that's ever done that on the grill. Uh, this week, we're gonna do uh, blooming onions on the grill. Um, I don't know if I've ever personally seen somebody do a per blooming onion on the grill. Um, I've done them. I know other people do do them. So if you know how to do it, great. If you don't, awesome. You're in the right place. We're going to show you how to do it today. And uh, we're going to show you how to do the dipping sauce and, and everything. Um, I'm going to use uh, my beef roaster. I'm going to put the, the onions in the, in the beef roaster and then put it on the grill. I'm going to use the... Uh, the Rec Tech um, Bullseye today. Uh, last weekend we used the Barrel House uh, Vertical Cooker. Uh, those are my main squeezes when it comes to grilling and smoking. Um, I also have a Weber still. Can't go without a Weber. And um, I got a Pit Boss too that I do use. I know everybody only sees it used for a rack for all my stuff to show, but I actually do use it. I just don't use it as often as all the rest. All right, so I know I've been running my mouth. Ah, okay, yeah, so people are asking about the winners for, oh yeah, ah, good, I'm glad you brought that up, Pat. So two, three things I wanna bring up. One, if you don't already know, we have a contest every week for the show. Um, we pick out two winners based on shares. So uh, at the end of the week, um, we look and see Everybody who shared, we pick a random winner, and then we also see who shared to the most places. Okay, so and then that per so we have two winners. You have two chances to win. Um. Uh, so two things with that. One, it doesn't count if you just share it to a bunch of your friends. Okay, because if your friend's setting is on private, private like most people, nobody sees it. Um, and we can't even verify if it's there if, if their uh, profile is set to private. So it needs to be like to, to other groups. Like, and so you could share it to barbecue groups. You could share it, if there's an onion group out there, you can share it to an onion group. If there's a uh, grapefruit juice group out there, you can share it. I actually have Baki in here, but that's all right. Um, I mean, you know what I mean? There, you don't, it doesn't have to be just barbecue groups. It could be, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, if there's a chef group out there, I mean, really, it, it could be all anything. So, so that's that's one thing. We're actually implementing uh, something else. If you have won in the last 30 days, you can't win again until 30 more days. Now, I really hate to put that in place, but we need to give people a chance, right? Because we have 
some people they just share 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 they love it and I, I hate to not like let them win all the time but we need to let other people win too but the best way to win is to share more than everybody okay so I'm gonna announce the winners of last week at the end of the show that's the way we always do it um, um, I think that's it I think we can get started Pat is that it all right so look um, this uh, this is a really extremely easy uh, recipe I um I don't expect to be here a full hour but I don't know I run my mouth a lot so I'll probably will be here so you have the root part of your Vidalia onion and you got the top right so you want to keep the root intact because that's what's going to hold the onion together okay so you want to take and go down about probably a half inch from the tip and cut the top off see if you don't cut down far enough uh, when you split it it's not going to split right in the middle um, and then on the bottom, you don't want to cut that root off. You just want to shave it just a hair Just to flatten it out so it sits flat, okay? Because if you don't do that, it will uh, just teeter-totter all over the place All right Now the next thing you just want to score it just a little bit if you can get away with not taking off a whole layer Great, but usually you're gonna have to take off that top layer. See you just rip that right off is anybody asking any questions yet, Pat? All right. If you have a question or a comment, that that's awesome, right? <laughs> I mean, you can share it to FarmersOnly.com, GrillersOnly.com. I mean, really, uh, most the the cool thing about barbecue and grilling is people from all walks of life do it, right? I mean. Even vegans do it. You could actually share this in a vegan group, right? It's an onion. That is like, I didn't even think of that. That's, that's brilliant. All right, so look, I'm doing two onions today. So um, let's knock these out real quick because I'm talking a lot. I need to make sure I'm moving at the same time. Now there's actually a second thing that I planned on grilling today that's just, just something to help take up some time. But I forgot to take it out of the freezer, so I got cold water running on it right now. And hopefully, it'll thaw out in time. Um, I forgot all about it, and a friend of mine I was chatting with this morning asked me about it, and I was like, oh. All right, so look. Remember, you don't want to cut, cut it off. You just want to shave it so it sits. Eh, so it sits right. All right, that's as good as that one gonna get. All right, so then you go top side down, top side down. You wanna stay about a half inch away from the center when you do this, but you just wanna go go all four, um, go four corners first. All right, and then you wanna go in between, in between. I mean, this is like one of the easiest uh, recipes. Now, for Vidalia onions, this is not, these are not big. Like, usually these are bigger than this, so that's why I'm doing two of them. So, yeah, so the Vidalia is, it's not that you can use a different onion. But the Vidalia is the best to use for a few different reasons. One, they're a sweeter onion. Two, you can see the shape of it, right? It's it's kind of wide and flat, um, and I'd say that would be pretty. And usually they're and like usually they're big, like this. Uh, these just happen to be small ones. I couldn't find any big ones. So look, see this? I cut it. I flipped it over. I just kind of you want to just mess with the petals a little bit, um, and then we'll get to how you prep this, okay? What does? Oh, okay. So Jason says the Spanish onion works too. So yeah, I mean, yes. Oh, that, right. That's a good point. So if you don't like the sweeter onions, then uh, you can go. You, like I said, you can use a bunch of different types of onions. This is just the most, uh, the, probably the most used one. So you can see, look, it's all kind of like opened up, right? So let me do this one real quick.
That's an interesting idea. I'm actually using the pellet grill today though, man. So, um, but that is a good idea. You can throw onion peels in to help flavor your food. So look, I'm gonna go through, uh-oh. Just messed that one up. So let me get this real quick. As you can see, I'm not doing what I, the way I did the first one. I'm just kind of going. It, it, it does. So it has, um, it has been a, a it, it is kind of tough sitting down and, and prepping food because I'm used to standing, but I'm doing this by myself. And if I'm standing, it'd be like this. You'd be looking at my chest all day. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, thanks for noticing that Todd because it is it is kind of tough to do all right I did this one kind of sloppy so let's see how it turns out yeah so I guess if you have an onion blossom making kit you don't have to do all this stuff that I just did um, I don't have one maybe I should check into doing those all right the, the, the center here is nice is a little tight but that's okay while it cooks it's going to soften up it's going to open up but look you can see i cut these a little little tight so i messed it up right there can you see that but uh it will be fine we will be we'll be good all right so now we're going to do a little egg wash right which this is uh some eggs and um a splash of milk and uh we don't do the cow milk we do almond milk I used to drink. Uh, I used to drink at least a gallon of um, uh, whole milk a week by myself, not counting what my kids drank. Um, and we just grew up drinking a lot of milk. And I watched the. Uh, I watched, and I always heard about like this documentary is out there and people quit drinking milk. I happened to watch that documentary, and the day I watched it is the day I quit drinking milk. Um, but the kids love milk. And so I get like the almond milk and the, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. I've never really drank it. I use it when I cook sometimes and that's about it. All right, so at this point, we got two things going on. We got our egg wash and some breadcrumbs, all right? And I just got, you know, Italian breadcrumbs. You know, that's plenty. Um... Yeah, so that is, people do do that. Um, so somebody mentioned about soaking it in, in, in water. Uh, I, I don't do that, and it's basically, if you soak your vegetables in ice water, um, they'll come out uh, usually a little crispier uh, when you grill them. Um, one, I didn't really, I didn't want to do this and then soak it, you know, so we have a, a time issue. Um, and if I did soak it, it would it would still be wet when I put it in here and the egg wash might not stick to it very good. So, uh, so basically that's the reason uh, it's not done. So look, for those of you who don't know, whenever you use nitrile gloves and your hands start sweating, they're hard to get on, right? So summertime, uh, you wanna put these on while your hands are cool on the inside. But if you already have a pair on, you can slip another pair over them and they generally go on pretty easy Let me see. so that way um, I can ch keep changing the outer layer and keep the inner layer on if that makes sense okay and if you haven't tried our nitro gloves I mean look look how far they stretch like I'm sure there's a breaking point and um, I have actually found a breaking point but I'll tell you what these things are good uh, we've gotten like great feedback on them it's a new product so anyway look you just swirl that around in there. Get that egg wash all in there really good. All right? Kind of let it drain out. Oh, yeah. All right. And then you want to throw it in the crumbs. Now, this one I got to be a little careful with because I cut it just a little deep. All right. Let me see if I can do this without breaking it up. 
There we go. Alright. Okay. So, let me go ahead and uh, do the breadcrumbs. And, like, you don't need it, like, like, you're going to shake a lot of this off. Right? You don't want it, like, all, I don't, I mean, some people might want it all caked up. I personally don't. And then you just throw it in the, uh, in your beast roaster. And, again, I need to be a little gentle with this one. Oh, so, hey, yeah, so you sure those weren't um, latex gloves? So, like, most people have an allergic reaction to latex. That's why these are latex-free. They don't have latex in them. They're nitrile. It's a different type of material. It's just very similar to the latex. So, um, so yeah, so if you have a allergic, if you're allergic to latex, then nitrile is the, actually the ones you want to get. Uh-oh. I gotta fix my, my bloomer up. Alright, so let's see if I can get this down. So this one didn't open it up quite like I want it to. Let me see if I can spread this out without breaking the petals. Alright, anyway. So at this point, you could actually sprinkle some other seasonings on there if you want. Um, I generally don't do it. I, I like it with just the Italian seasoning on there. But, you know. Everybody's got their own taste. Um, so, like, see that? I still got another pair under here. Take this pair off. Nice and easy. Um, all right. So, this is all ready to go in. Can y'all see this pretty good? How's that look? Huh? All right. Yeah, they were just uh, plain Italian break room. And look, um, depending on who you ask, um, you're going to get different opinions on how long it takes on the grill. <clears throat> Some people do it um, like 300 degrees. I got that sucker cranked up to like 425. My goal is to have that thing done in like 15 minutes. Um, let me go check to see if my other thing is thawed out and then that gives me something else to throw in the grill also. Um, so give me just two seconds, two seconds. Um, so my, my meat that I was going to throw on along with this is still not thawed out. It's like halfway thawed. So I don't know that that's going to happen. It was a, it was leftover flank steak from last week. Um, cause I used flank steak in my fatty. So I was like, you know what? That'd be kind of good to throw in the grill with this, uh, blooming onion. Uh, but then I forgot to take it out of the freezer. So. Yeah, but the problem is, is when I froze it, I kind of rolled it up and I, and I put it in a vacuum sealed bag. So the inside of that is still frozen. It's not like I, if I would have laid it out flat, it would have been thawed out by now. Lesson learned. All right. Oh, charcoal? You mean cooking them? On, yeah. You can put them on charcoal. You can put them in your oven if you want to. I mean, like... Literally, if you can cook it in your oven, you can cook it on a grill. You know what I mean? Like, you can do pie, you can do bread, you can do, like, literally anything. Um, I can't think of anything that you can't cook on a grill. I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's something. Now, I'll tell you what would be hard to do on a grill is cheesecake. Now, if you know how to do really, really good cheesecake, uh, that's not happening on a, on, on a grill. Not, not in turn out really, really good. So, look. Uh, let's throw together uh, the sauce, the dipping sauce. It's really simple. Um, you just use some mayonnaise. This is blue plate. 
Somebody told me last night, blue plate is actually the same as Hellman's, but everybody thinks it's different. It's because it has a different brand name on it. Um, sriracha, right? Uh, some people use mayonnaise, uh, ketchup, um, horseradish, and paprika, but it's simpler if you just use uh, mayonnaise, sriracha, some paprika, and you're supposed to squeeze just a little bit of lime juice in it, and I forgot to get a lime, so I'm going to use a little bit of lemon, and uh, that would be fine. I don't think anybody's going to really care. So I'm going to cut that, get that ready. Um, Where's my spoon? So, I need to keep everybody entertained long enough to get that done. That is going to be the hard part. I wanted to do it with the flank steak, but I don't see that happening. Alright, so, I'm going to do a couple tablespoons of mayo. So, you go like one. And these are like big tablespoons. It's, look, this doesn't have to be exact at all. Um, because you can tweak it if, if you don't like it you can add more mayo if it's not spicy enough you can add more sriracha or more paprika you know what I mean it's not it's not a, a hard and fast uh, recipe like this is that it's it's the taste so you do like say three good squirts and we'll like put whoa yeah not like that Some paprika and I'm just gonna squeeze if I can get a, keep a seed from coming in there. Just a little bit of lime juice. Like I said, technically it's supposed to be, I mean, it's supposed to be lime. Technically, uh, it's supposed to be lime, but uh, I'm using a lemon because that's all I have. Um, and this is going way too fast. All right, and look, and then you just mix it up. Um, so Mark wants me to sing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, uh, I, don't, I can't even remember a song unless you give me a beat. If you give me the beat, I might be able to sing for you. I can do Mary Had a Little Lamb, something like that. Um, that could be entertaining. Um, so I could talk about something else. Um, so we've been, uh, we rolled out a wholesale program with uh, Grill Beast. I guess a year or so ago. I don't even know what the date was. Um, and we had like no clue what we were doing. Um, so we just did what we thought we should do, which was fine, you know? It's no big deal. Um, we did fine with it. Uh, we, we really weren't very successful in getting in like a bunch of stores like we wanted to. But um, since then, I've talked to quite a few people who have a lot of experience in this field. And so what I did last week is I restructured the entire program. So now there's tiers, there's a map pricing, there's all this stuff. So, so if you own any kind of a store, um, retail store that, that sells anything similar to grilling stuff or you have customers that come in that buy grilling or that would buy grilling stuff, um, contact us. We are launching it actually tomorrow we're calling our first uh, retailers and if you're already in our retailer program you're gonna get an update on all the the price list the discount tiers and all that kind of stuff it's pretty exciting um, and to, to learn how to do this the right way and um, so hopefully it makes it a little bit more appealing for retailers to uh, to want to join us in that um, oh yeah what's some of the song suggestions <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could do Dirty D's Done Dirt Cheap. I could do that one. So, um, as much as I'd like to sing for y'all today, I think uh, I think it is to everybody's best interest that I don't. Um, what's everybody grilling today? You know what? I hear I can take and go get a little closer to the... Uh, so Pat, Pat is rubbing it in because he's doing a bushel of crabs and I haven't had crabs in um, like the kind you eat. Um, why did I even say that? Um, 
Uh, he, had, he did soft shell crabs last night and he's doing uh, bushel of steam crabs today um, with uh, probably Old Bay season and that's the only way I like them. Um, Oh, okay. So Pat does them a little bit different, and uh, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah, I know. All right, so yeah, so Pat has another way of doing it. So because Old Bay is expensive, and uh, so apparently there's a new way to do it. I haven't, I haven't been in Maryland. Oh, uh, so he said it's called Jo Number Two. Um, I haven't been to Maryland. Maryland is where I grew up. I haven't been back to Maryland in. Um, uh, I've been there once since I've been living in Louisiana, and I've been in Louisiana about 16 years. So probably my first couple years here, I think I went to Maryland once. Um, so anyway, I'm going to be in Pennsylvania. Christine Johnson. The Johnsons can't hold a tune in a bucket. Yeah, that's true. Um, when I'm in the shower, I can sing pretty good. So um, what else we got going on today? Yes, yeah, Steve, that's a rec tech bullseye, buddy. Um, does, does anybody have any questions that I missed? We're just waiting on this blooming onion to get done. So, um, how many people we got on right now, Pat? All right, so I think we busted 200 earlier. We're down to 140. We need to get some action going, and then we'll, um, we'll have more viewers. But right now, we're kind of like spinning wheels. So... I'm hoping to get that blooming onion done in like 15 minutes because I got that, that heat cranking. Um, let me go check this uh, flank steak again. If that's thawed out, then we can uh, have some more action. Now that is a good idea, Richard. Let's do some crabs on the grill. Um, yes. So look, we have some flank steak that looks like it's thawed out. So let's do some flank steak. Loving it. Loving it. And this is what I put on my flank steak. Unless I want to get fancy and put a rub together. Um, you can never go wrong with salt, pepper, and garlic. You just can't. Um, unless you're baking a cake. So, so look, let me, uh, let me uh, do this. Oh, so um, my uh, youngest, no, my, my second oldest daughter, I have, uh, oh man, this is almost not frozen, not thawed out enough. So this is still a little bit frozen. I'm gonna butcher it just a little bit, getting it apart. Um, so my second oldest daughter is getting married. And it was it is my first daughter to get married. Um, I have I have six total daughters. Two of them are stepdaughters, which you know I still consider them my daughters, but I'm just saying. Um, so look, this part right here is still frozen. Um, let me uh, do that a little bit. It'll thaw out on the grill. What? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that means. All right. So, okay, there's two Chris Johnsons in the group. One of them is my sister, and one of them is a dude, <laughs> and he's an admin. So I think that's what my sister Chris is making a comment about. I don't ever reference her or something. I don't know. All right, I, I don't know what that means, and they, I don't know. Um, so I won't only, yeah, I won't only reference you next week. I will. Um, you will be on the show. Maybe, maybe. Yes, so um, we'll see what happens the night before. 
Right. So I really do need to get a speakerphone that so everybody can hear like what me and Pat talk about because um, I need a little bit of oil. Hold up. So I just need a little bit of oil put on it here. Rub it down, rub it around. That onion is good. I'm gonna I'm about to check it when I throw this on there. So um, look, uh, throw a little bit of oil on. Um, some people use mustard uh, with meat. So there's there's a few schools of thought. Like some people say you only use mustard just to get the seasoning to stick. That is not true. What is true is mustard has vinegar in it and it helps break down the meat. Um, and it also um, helps to you know, season the stick. So most of the time I use oil because um, some seasonings need that to, for the seasoning to break down. So it's kind of like a catch thing, right? Like, do you want the seasoning to break down or the meat or both? So, um, this is a very thin cut of meat because it was a flank and I filleted it. Um, so, it's only going to take a minute to cook. I want to take and throw uh, some salt, some pepper. Um, so, all right, so I use salt, pepper, garlic. Let me flip this around. So we got a dude that grew up with us um, in the group now, Daniel Sterling. How you doing? And he's asking about my oldest brother. And as far as I know, Robbie could not get off work. So, um, so no, Robbie will not be there. Um, we haven't seen Robbie in a while, or I haven't. I know Chris sees him because Chris is up in Pennsylvania, I mean, uh, Massachusetts. If she gets the thing. I haven't seen him in a long time. Um, Pat said he hasn't seen him in a while. There, there you go. That's that's pretty much all you really need. To, if the meat is really good, um, you don't need as much seasonings. Um, there's a lot of seasonings that have like a ton of stuff that you don't really need. It like masks the taste of the meat. It changes the taste of the meat. And for me. I like to enhance the flavor of the meat and let the meat kind of hold its own, right? Uh, but it's all whatever you want. So um, let me check this uh, this onion out. It is a hot day in Louisiana today. Yeah, it's not even hot. not even close. Oh, I have not uh, made a decision on that. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do about that. Yeah, and I think we already owe her some stuff, too. So, um, all right, let me see. So, somebody was asking about the banners. So, we do have banners coming out, right? They're, we, we, we have canvas banners, um, and we have, like, a flag-type material banner. And we have flags coming. Uh, we ended up with banners with the flag material because the flag company messed up. And they're remaking our flags. So now we have banners. Um, which is all good. You know? It's all good. And so we'll, we'll, we, could, um, we could use those as prizes too. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this on the grill now. So let me, um, let me move this. I'm going to move the camera. And how many people we got on right now? All right. All right, so if we can, can everybody see okay? Is that pretty good? Uh oh. Instagram needs to tilt. So I'm doing Instagram and, um, and uh, Facebook at the same time. These are our beef tongs. So, let's see. 
slide this bad boy. If it's getting close, we want to see a little bit of char all over that thing. See if we got plenty of room for our plank steak. Okay. So let me remove this over here. This would be. This is what we'll put the plank steak on when it's done. Let's um, we can come over here and talk a bit. So um, now I can see comments. How you doing, John? Brian Reeves? Ed? We got some people on uh, Instagram too. I wish Instagram would show like the actual names um, instead of the uh, the like screen names. Um, because like I can't pronounce a bunch of the names um, the way they're done, right? So anyway, um, does anybody have any questions about what we've done today? Like this is like a really simple uh, thing to do. Um, so right now I'm using, and they're not they're not the best pellets in the world. I'm uh, I'm I'm trying different pellets out right now. So this is what I got right now. Uh, they're not the best. I've actually learned a bunch about pellets lately. And um, a friend of Chris Johnson, not my sister Chris Johnson, but the admin Chris Johnson, um, introduced me to a guy, and for the life of me right this second, I can't think of his name. And he has his own brand of pellets. And he educated me on how these different companies manufacture pellets. Uh, and it's amazing the crap that they do to the pellets. Um, and that's why you get pellets that are crap. Um, and they don't really add any wood flavor and they sometimes they screw up your, uh, your, your pellet grill and all that kind of stuff. And it's also a little bit of a learning curve on how to get your smoke flavor in your meat when you're using a pellet grill. It's a little different, I mean it's a lot different than using charcoal with wood and all that kind of stuff. Um, so is Chris on today, Pat? Huh. So anyway, so um, I don't think I don't know if Chris is on today, but um, maybe we can send him a message and get him to give me that name, so uh, so I can talk about the guy like I know what I'm talking about. Shannon. Yeah. Okay. So Shannon has it. Lumber Lumberjack. Uh, that guy, the guy that owns that company, is now. I've been told that his pellets are the best from everybody who's ever used them. Uh, so Shannon apparently knows about those, uh, but I, and I can't think of the guy's name that owns the company. Um, so um, if anybody can throw that out there, that'd be nice. Hold on, I gotta turn my steak. I would say, um, so Pat said, and somebody said, asked if the, uh, I ain't just gonna pick up any flavor from the steak. I, I, I wouldn't think so because it's, it's. I'm gonna say no. I could be wrong. I haven't, I haven't right. I, I don't know that I've ever put a steak in with onions before, with a blooming onion before. So this could be just the first time and we'll know when we take it out. Um, let me see. Okay, boy, vice first Gregory. So Karen. Oh, you know what? Karen, did you get our uh, newsletter this morning? You know what? I need to look at something. I think there's another winner, and um, I forgot about it. So let me dig that out real quick. Um, so if, you're, if you get our Grill Beast newsletter, um, we have little challenges in there. Oh wow, I can smell that onion and it smells really good now. So it's getting close to done. So we have challenges and contests in the newsletter. And the only way to be in that contest is to be subscribed to the newsletter. So if you go to vip.grillbeast.com, you can get into the newsletter. And like, we don't like spam you with a whole bunch of crap. We send out a, a newsletter every Sunday morning. And if we have new products, deals, or whatever, then we'll send you out new other stuff. Um, 
Yeah, that's Karen. I'm glad you were on. So Karen Peralta won our newsletter. See, look, you can see right there our newsletter challenge. All right. So Karen, um, you need to contact us so we can get you what you want, which is I don't remember if there was something um, specific that we put up. I have to go back and look. But probably it's going to be just your choice of any one of our um, accessories, and uh, we'll send it out to you free of charge. Still has the lifetime guarantee, free shipping, all that good stuff. But so that's Karen Perlenta. I know I'm probably not pronouncing your last name right. Let's check this flank steak out. Yeah. The onions are done. The onions are done. So, our grilled beef gloves. If you can handle all that heat. You know this, this steel is like 400 degrees, right? There you go. Actually, let me leave that open. Turn that jet engine off. That's the only kind of funky thing when you uh, when you use a pellet grill. You have that jet engine sound going on, and uh, you kind of get used to it, and you don't really notice it um, until you turn it off, and then you say, "Wow, it's kind of quiet out here without that." But uh, I mean, it makes your life a lot easier when you when you use it. So, in case you didn't notice. These are our beast tongs. They used to come in a set only. Now we have it to where you can buy them by themselves. Same thing with the shovel. Um, if you haven't seen the shovel, this is like, check this bad boy out. I use this for a pizza peel sometimes. I, so somebody broke into my brother Pat's shed and they stole his beast shovel. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to hook him up with the new one. Okay, so look, we have our a blooming onion. Again, this is our beast roaster. It's actually uh, two tools in one. It's um, a beer can chicken roaster. It has a can that attaches to it and all that, so you can sit your chicken down on it. But it also comes off, so you can use it for seafood, vegetables, and all that kind of stuff. So look, you can see how good that all looks. Like this one's not perfect. This one looks a lot better, you know, but hey, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Or does it? I don't know. For me, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it tastes good. All right, and then we have our sriracha dipping sauce. So I'm gonna give that just a minute to cool down. And, um, and then we're gonna go to town on eating that. And this is our flank steak. Hopefully I got it to a nice medium. Looking at the juices, it, it looks pretty close. Um, the juices are clear, so it might not be as rare as I usually like it, but it's a thin cut of meat, so, um, so we'll see. It tastes really good, I know that. Let me uh, freshen up my drink a little bit and then we will we we'll try some food. So, I do this every week. And then, if anybody in our group, I don't know if that people don't do them, do the do what I cook a lot this very next week, or I don't. I haven't been catching it. I don't know. But if you do it and I don't see it, message me so I'll make sure I go look at it because what I've been trying to put together 
is another challenge. Like if you do what we did on Feast with the Beast the next week, we'll take everybody who did it and we'll choose a winner out of that. I mean, we have like so many contests going on, it's kind of hard to keep track. So I don't know if maybe Pat wants to write that down, um, write this new challenge down. Uh, if you do, yeah, if you do um, what I do on Feast with the Beast, um, you have a chance of winning something also. Right, so you have to, um, right, you have to tag. So if you haven't noticed, we got Beast Nitro. Beast Nitro is available. All right, let's, um, let's try this out. All right, so let me, uh, let me cut this steak just a little bit. Let me get. All right, so hopefully, hopefully everybody can see this. Yeah, it's not bad. It's still juicy. Not quite, it's, you know, it's not bad. We'll see how the red comes back into it when the air hits it. Sometimes it's hard to tell right at first. It looks like it might be overcooked, but then all of a sudden it turns nice and pink. Yeah, oxygen sometimes has to hit. It's weird because sometimes it doesn't and other times it does. I don't know. I don't know enough about meat to know why that happens. All right, so we have this. That's really good. So, see how that pulls off? Dip it in there. Oh! So actually, that should probably be two separate contests. All right, so do you wanna, yeah, do you wanna take a look at that real quick? Well, so all you do, yeah, all you do is you go to videos. I'm sorry, I got to tell Pat where to find that other uh, video. You go to go to videos and scroll down, and it'll show you every live feed, and you'll see 38 number two. So we did two live feeds last week for the same cook. So Pat has to go in and find real quick the winners of that shared that second feed. We forgot to count that. So uh, the good thing is, is it's not as much it's not going to be as many because it was a it was a shorter video um so this i'll tell you what this is like really really good i maybe could have left it in there another 10 minutes but i'll tell you what these onions are juicy i mean really juicy you can taste the sweetness in them um Oh, so Pat counted the second one. He didn't count the first one yet. So, if you want to hear the winner, you just got to wait another minute. Yeah, that, right. So, that was a clue. All right. So, Pat has to go through and count real quick. So, because we did two, two Feasts with the Beast in one day, that means there's going to be four winners. Right? There's gonna be two randoms, one for each feed, and then two most shares for each feed. So we just need, if we could be just patient for a minute. How many people are on that? All right, so we're hovering around 130. This is good. This is good. The flanks take along with it is perfect. Um, the, the grapefruit, the grapefruit juice is the grapefruit juice is perfect. Um, how many shares did we have on that one? So we had 280 shares on one of our feeds last week, and 78 on the second one. So Pat needs to go through, scan the uh, the one with 200 and some, and um, and count those up. Hmm. I wish I had some tortillas. 
but it's alright that I don't. So Chaz. So Chaz is on. Chaz won second place on our fatty challenge. Rick Albertini, how you doing? Oh yeah, so my official taster is not here today. That would be Tyler. Tyler's at her mom's house for the weekend. And uh so yeah, no tasting from Tyler. So Karen, did you hear that you won the newsletter challenge? I smell something burning. All right, we should be all right, hopefully. Hopefully it's not the house. Um, who else we got on? Gregory, sounds like a... Uh, yeah, you can hear them bad boys all over the place. Um, they're actually not as bad as they were. I used to live in Algiers, right in, uh, in the West Bank of New Orleans. And I tell you what, the, um, the locust was so bad and so loud, sometimes you couldn't even hear me speak when I did videos. It was, and it's like, I would, it's like they, would, they wouldn't even do it until I started talking. It was crazy. So anyway, um, it, it, it's not um, bad. How you doing, David Gravin? I'm trying to scroll through here. Greg, Richard, Chris, Jason, onion, petal, piece of meat, sauce, onion petal, nice party bites. That's a good idea. What the heck is burning? It must be some, somebody else must be barbecuing. Because it can't be anything here, but I smell something burning. And uh, I got the grill off, so... Hopefully it's somebody else. I know I got a neighbor two doors down. He grills a lot. I got people over the back here. They grill a lot. So this is a good neighborhood um, for grillers. Um, could be done. Nice pinwheel with that flank. You know, I actually I thought about doing a pinwheel with it. Um, I was talking to Rick Albertini last night, and I uh, we, we were talking about that. So, yes, yeah, so um, that's a good idea. Um, so Jason suggested um, doing petals and meat together and then dip. That's a really good idea. That went really good together. All right, so if you have not shared the feed yet, please share the feed. Even though it's almost over, it's okay. You share the feed. Um, you can share this feed all week long. So, like, you can come back every single day, share the feed again. Share it in just different groups. Now, I don't think I would go and share it into a car group, right? You want to share it in, like, um, a... Um, a food related group or a drink related group or a, a vegan group um, like the vegans might not like the steak part but they'll love the onion right uh, we don't have anything against vegans they like they like to grill too uh, we do grilled vegetables we've done grilled desserts on this show um, last Easter we did um, two or three desserts that you could do with your kids Easter candy and I tell you what it was really good um, I think I could probably go ahead and announce two of the winners from last week. One of them is somebody who's won quite a bit, and uh, but she do, she does a lot of stuff. Of she really um, helps spread the word, so I'm I'm always happy to see her win. Um, but like I said, uh, from here forward, if you win, you can't win again for another 30 days. But we still don't want you to stop sharing. You know what I mean? It's like, how do you keep people sharing that, you know, hopefully you want to share because you want to share. So it's not just about winning. So um, one of our winners name is Jennifer Bates. She had the most shares. Congratulations, Jennifer. I think Jennifer already owns every single thing we have. So we do have some new things coming out. I, I'm, I'm thinking I already owe her one of those things. Um, and then who was the random winner Pat, of that one? Yeah. Uh, Logan Roberts was the um, 
the random winner from the second feed. Pat's finding out who the random and the most shared winner is from the first feed. So we'll have that announcement in just a second. Um, correct. Yeah. So if. Is that the most shares or the. Uh, okay. How many shares did he have? Okay, so we got Jeff Henry, who had 17 shares last week. Um, so he wins the most shares for the first feed. And then we need a random one, Pat. Just just spin it and stop it. And... All right. So who? All right, so Bill Batchelor won the random. So uh, Bill Batchelor, Jennifer Bates, Jeff Henry and who was the other one, Pat? And Logan Roberts. All of you guys get a choice of one of our beastly tools. So I can uh, see those in the background. If you go to our website, just look for Grill Beast Accessories. Um, and you can choose one of those. How many people we got on right now, Pat? We're about to wrap this up. So yeah, we're about to wrap this up. It's been an hour. I know that for a fact because Instagram just shut off. It can only go, so it can only go for an hour. I truly appreciate y'all being here. Uh, next weekend, I think we're gonna do something special because of my daughter getting married. Um, so, please show up next weekend. I know I'm gonna do a live feed. I just don't know what I'm doing or where I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a live feed. It might just be the Johnson sitting around, hanging out. I don't know. Um, Thanks a lot for coming. Appreciate y'all. And uh, let me see. Pedro. Who said? I don't know. Pedro. I can't pronounce your last name, man. Uh, yeah. Did we say his? Did we say his name? Yeah. So Pedro. Oh, okay. All right. Pedro's saying that's not how you say your name, but. I, I don't I don't think I um, uh, show your pics of the blooming oh yeah so I don't have Richard I don't have any pics of the onion on the grill I have uh, I'm gonna have video footage right but uh, I don't have any pictures man so oh, okay yeah so he was joking <laughs> Pedro had me confused I was like what the hell did I do uh, sure So share to groups, now what happens or contacted. So Ed, yeah, so Ed, we do not pick the winners until next Sunday. So that's what I'm saying. You can come back and share this thing every single day, even Sunday morning early, and it's going to count towards your most shares, okay? It has to be to some groups. It can't be to personal private pages. Like we need to be able to tell that you shared it to a group. Even if it's a private group, we can tell. It's weird. If it's a private person, we can't see it. But if it's a private group, we can tell that it was shared to the group. Um, I think Pedro. Yeah, Kevin Pedro was joking. I was, I was miss. Hey, John Starskovich, how you doing, man? Um, so anyway, yeah, that's it for today. And if you have any questions, let me know. I appreciate y'all coming. I truly do. And. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to eat. Peace out. Y'all go grill you something today. Let me turn that damn thing off.